Right, I think we've picked over the remains of yesterday about as much as we can. On with today, which starts midway between Malaga and Marbella in the small town of Coin, and heads pretty much straight up a third category climb before rolling out of the hills and onto the flat in the direction of Seville. The finish, in fact, is just outside in Tomares, and it's the first proper chance for a bunch sprint since stage four, although this being the Vuelta, there is an uphill section on the run-in. Adam, finally another chance of a sprint today, if someone controls it, will they? Uh, hopefully Quickstep will control it, we're praying that they do, but now we'll see, you know, you never know with this race, every day it's taken more than sort of 60k for the break to go, so hopefully it'll be a bit calmer today, you know, it's a rest day sort of before the big mountain days, so should be a bit more calmer, hopefully. Matteo, you're the hot favourite to win the stage today, the question is, are Quickstep going to control the race? Uh, we will try to control the start first of all because it, it, it is already from a quite a good week we go full gas for at least one hour so we hope also that people start to get tired and they relax uh, and they like to have a off day also because uh, more hard stages are to come and today we want to go for the sprint and the finale isn't the most straightforward isn't the most simple do you like what you've seen on the road book yeah, not really honestly but yeah the finale is like that so we have to adapt uh, we need to go for the victory anyway so, all set up for a sprint stage today, which rather lessened the incentive to get in a break. Four men in it when it settled down, Davide Bellella having briefly made it five so that he could take the early mountain points on the third category climb. The four who remained when he'd gone were BMC's Alessandro De Marchi, AG2R's Alexis Goujar, Arno Corte of FTJ, and Lotto Soudal's Thomas de Ghent making his breakaway comeback. No Omar Fraeli in the break today, in fact he was out the back from early on and looking pretty sick. Quick step, as promised, did the work of controlling the field and keeping the break within catching distance. Chris Froome was happy to sit behind and let his scabs heal. Even Alberto Contador seemed to have taken the day off, queuing his team for a post-feed zone rendition of La Bamba. At the back of the field, a crash brought down a couple of Dutchmen, Bert Jan Lindemann of Lotto NL Jumbo and Jetsa Boll of Mansano Postabon. They both got up and rejoined the race. We join it inside the final 40 kilometres. Alessandro De Marchi takes a water bottle, drinks a little bit, pours much more just over the back of his neck just to try and cool himself down. He's still got 28 seconds, 9.6 kilometres to go. Four or five distinct teams getting themselves sorted on the front of the peloton. Now, Aqua Blue Sport, riding for Adam Blythe, have the... Well, they've been slightly disrupted as Lasse Norman Hansen moves to the front, the only one of their team remaining. Sunweb have made a big move up the right-hand side of the road, and Soren Craig Anderson, who they'll be riding for today, likes an uphill finish. He's a tremendously fast uh, climber, really. Matteo Trentin can also climb extremely well. But it will be interesting to see whether uh, some of those slightly rangier, perhaps the less super-fast sprinters, go a little bit better on this climb than the likes of... Arguably, Adam Blythe might find this just not quite to his liking today. Yeah, we're, we're also deep into the race here. I mean, it's uh, stage 13. It's uh, somebody who is good than it normally might not be. Some guys who are a bit fresher, recovering well, could be very good. So it does get a little bit more predictable. Obviously, there are always the, the, the usuals, as in Alaphilippe and Matteo Trentin, although we don't know who they're racing for today, whether one has put their hand up for it and, and the other one has, uh, has said they will work for them because that's what they're going to have to do. They can't, if they start to say, well, why don't you both go for it? That's normally when things go wrong. But if they, they really do, with two riders that good, if they can get them to work really well together, and this is what happened with somewhere, the reason they didn't, didn't it didn't work so well with Bargiel and Kilderman because obviously Bargiel wasn't willing to do that for whatever reason. But if that you can switch roles occasionally day to day as Quickstep appears to be very good at, then that, that's going to serve them very well. So, we're not going to know, I don't think, until the final kilometre, whether it's Matteo Trentin or Alaphilippe today. There is the green jersey of Trentin, buried in the middle of that pack. 
Got a lot of riders in front of him. Quick Step Floors have definitely ceded control of this phase of the race with just over 8k to go to a number of other teams. Trek Segafredo being the latest to send four or five riders to the front. There they are, the white uh, jerseys, sorry, the red jerseys, the white helmets, along with Katusha on the right down the middle of the road. Though surely uh, Trek Segafredo would be riding for Edward Toons, who did that massive effort for Alberto Contador yesterday. Now De Marquis takes us through eight kilometres to go, and he's got a nine-second advantage, so the catch is very, very imminent now. There you go, he knows it now, you can see them. The neutral motorbike's gone by. FTJ, uh, now that they can ride, Arnaud Corté, their man in the breakaway, has been caught a long time ago, so they move to the front now, riding for their sprinter, Lorenzo Monza. He's just got one man in front of him. And Bordeaux Hansgrohe take control of the race, riding for the German sprinter Michael Schwarzmann. The Marquis taking his earpiece out, doesn't want to hear anything more from his teammates or the team car. Just him against the peloton and against all hope. I can see for uh, there you go, he's, he's stopped now. Aqua Blue moving up on the left, hand side of the road. But a, a peloton on a road like this has serious advantage because there's so many teams that can position themselves easily. It's uh, the, per the riders behind can just, it is relatively easy being on the wheels when it's, uh, it's not at all technical. There he goes, Matteo Trentin leading Alaphilippe. So that would point towards their man for today is Alaphilippe. Would suggest that, but they've surprised us before, haven't they, with that attack on stage two by Yves Lompard taking the uh, red jersey in the process that brilliant win tactically perfect when Matteo Trentin rolled in in second place a one two for quick step who have in terms of stage wins dominated this welter uh, four wins already from a number of different riders the Marquis had another frustrating day out but it was a difficult breakaway that one to make stick big Connor Dunn on the front Adam Yates tucked in in third wheel, still got two men, and another one, just Aaron Gate, that is, just to uh, latch on and lead him out. There's um, Blythe with the white shades on. Can he finally get this Grand Tour victory? It's going to, I think, probably mitigate against him the uphill nature of today's finish, but on his day, certainly capable of it. Yeah, it is going to be a, a very interesting sprint. So I said there, there could even be some GC riders up there if it, if it is quite hard. I mean, it's it's been, as I said, it's been very hard welter so far they're back into the heat over 35 degrees today it's uh, and it's a r relatively interesting apart from the fact it's this it is this very big road um, it is a quite a flowing sort of finish it's not certainly not one of the more technical ones a couple of roundabouts in the final kilometer um, but theory nothing too obtrusive because I think it does remain mostly on these big roads obviously not this big but it, it, it's they won't have been told in their briefings, they won't be expecting a real narrow road. Another little thing to look out for in the chaos of the finale today will be uh, the, the race of the GC, I mean, the race for the Vuelta. I wonder if there are any careless little splits or difficult little irritating a second here or a second there for some of the GC favourites. They could lose time or gain time on rivals here on this difficult finish. Yeah, exactly, so when they come to four kilometres, uh, they will turn off this, this the very big sort of uh, almost motorway onto the sort of boulevards and here it is that is coming coming to towards it now it still gets this gets a little bit smaller and then it does get a little bit but still nothing nothing that you would consider to be a uh, hazardous if you like but you can see the speed they're going and it's these it's these sweeping bends that start to string it out so you can see there so even if it's not to the roads are, are, are are conducive to a big peloton helping them helping the teams line out it's the it's these sweeping bends and the roundabouts that do start to string it out but you then do have room to move up the side see if you come out you've got a strong team around you you can then just move up the side of the road so the climbing if that's what we're going to call it the ramp starts at three kilometers one and a half k from this point and quick step reassert themselves right on the front and what a strong team they are Yves Lampard Eros Kopecky Bob Jungels then Matteo Trentin and still Julian Alaphilippe. Strength in numbers and high caliber riders at that on the front. 4K is another roundabout here. So again, it's like slight stringing out. Chris Froome well placed up the front. Now Chris Froome's in exactly the right position there complicated finish on the Tour de France into Harrogate in 2014. I think Chris Froome finished fifth. Yeah. A stage one by Marcel Kittel on that occasion. Well, at this point in the race, it, it, 
it's the GC riders who are who are the strongest. They're, they're recovering the fastest. They're, they're doing those big efforts all the time. They can handle these finishes and and also have the motivation of not losing time. Um, and often we do see the GC riders surprisingly high placed. Now Lotto Sudal moved to the front, taking it away from. Um, from quick step, temporarily at least. Their main man, their fastest finisher, has gone home, Jens de Buscare. So I'm not sure necessarily who they'd be riding for, but uh, clearly not the man on, fr on the very front of the race at the moment. Couldn't be another day for Thomas Machinski, <laughs> could it possibly? He is looking extremely now, look, Alaphilippe swapped, so it's for Trentin. So they're riding for Trentin, because I just saw Alaphilippe moved into the wheel in front of him and just glanced around to make sure he was there. Here we go, though. This is where but the road kicks it, it up. It could be a case that they're going to let Alaphilippe attack. Matteo Trentin lets him go and then lets it force the other teams to act, which would be quite a clever move, is if they really set up Alaphilippe and then Trentin just polices everything behind and lets the other teams do a lead out, but by default, in, by doing it by chasing down Alaphilippe. Here we go. Up it rears. Now, to what, what sort of damage will this do? Around about 700 metres of climbing. That forces a couple of riders out of the saddle. Bob Jungers now, Alaphilippe, Trentin. What are their tactics, quick step flaws? Are they going to launch a, a big attack here from one of those two? I mean, Trentin, this won't be any problem for him at all. He's demonstrated time and time again he goes well on this kind of climb. It's Lotto Sudal uh, moved to the front. Bob Jungers just trying to shut that one down at the expense of another rider from quick step. But Jungel's looking strong as well. They sweep past that attack from Lotto Sudal. And uh, Soren Craig Anderson getting himself into position on the wheels there in the white jersey from Sunweb. 2.6 kilometres remaining. And Craig Anderson, I think, is going on the attack. Well, that works perfectly for Jungels because otherwise they didn't have any teammates left. So he can now use him as, a, as almost a sort of a pseudo member of the quick step team. So Jungels needs to just leave him there and slowly peg him back. And then the longer he takes to peg him back, the longer he can take advantage of him. Because obviously if he brings him back too quick, he'll give up the somewhere rider. So he has to give him a little bit of thought. Just as you were saying, Trentin just allows a, a few wheels to open up to uh, Julien Alaphilippe, who's just sitting on the wheel of Bob Jungels. Great ride from Jungels to shut that down from Soren Craig Anderson, who finds himself in check at the moment with three of the strongest quick step riders sitting on his wheel. And there you go, that's why it would have been better for Jungels to just let Soren Craig Anderson stay out there a bit longer, make him think that he was, a, he was in control, because the moment you bring him back, he starts to slow down again. 2K to go, and that group's no bigger than about 15, 20 riders. And a little gap's emerging further back down the road. So they sweep down now for temporarily, and then it kicks up on two little stages again. Well, Jungels has a big job to do now because that's it. you can't leave Alaphilippe out there too long because Alaphilippe, as strong as he is, you know, he needs to be at least in that, not see the front until inside a kilometre to go. So Jungels has got to try and make this effort last over a kilometre, ideally, to drop Alaphilippe with 600 metres to go 500. Uh, which is a big ask, but if he paces it right, it is possible. Well, they do have uh, all their cards to play at the moment, Quick Step. They do have control of the front, but even then, uh, it's, they've got to convert it. They've got to get their tactics spot on here, but they have got uh, everything exactly where they want it. Soren Craig Anderson has recovered. He's sat on the wheel of the green jersey. He could potentially go again. Michael Schwarzman from Border Hansgrohe is part of that selection as well. At least I think that's uh, Schwarzman. Excellent ride as well from Milano, from Manzana Postabon. And Moscon, Team Sky and Moscon, I think it is, in about 11th position with Chris Froome on his wheel. So I wouldn't be surprised if Moscon lead out Chris Froome to just place well. Uh, but we'll see, we'll see what happens there. Now, Youngles, this is going to work out perfectly again. Astana right now, there you go, Alaphilippe jumps on him. So Youngles done his job now, Alaphilippe can use the Astana rider as his, again, as his teammate in a way. So otherwise, Alaphilippe would have had to do all this work on his own. It kicks up again. I think it's Chinetsky who is being closed down by Julian Alaphilippe. Trentin looking beautifully well positioned in the green jersey. Ever so calm and collected and relying on some really strong work by his teammates. And now Alaphilippe hits the front. And Alaphilippe uh, forces the pace as hard as he can. This is perfect for Trentin. Look at him. He's in cruise control at the moment. He's got Michael Schwarzman there alongside him. Craig Anderson also sitting on the wheel. And that is the selection. And look at the splits happening. Chris Froome sitting in seventh place, I think. Six on the radio. Place. Chris Froome. Border hands grow with two riders. Still, they haven't got rid of that green jersey, though. Alaphilippe has peeled off. So. Oh, he, I think he's calling Muscon back. So Muscon always telling Muscon to go for the stage because he's safe. I think they told Muscon to go for the stage. So Gianni Muscon, capable of so much, can he open up his sprint? He's going to have to get past uh, uh, Matteo Trentin. And now Trentin goes with a couple of hundred metres, perfectly placed, perfectly led out. Muscon trying to get on terms with the Italian, but once again, it's Matteo Trentin. He takes his third victory on the Vuelta, and they did it perfectly. There's Ilmo Zaccarin, little 
possibly little splits there in the field as uh, TJ Van Garderen crosses the line in a group with David de la Cruz. Be interesting to see when every rider is across the line whether one or two of the GC riders have lost a little bit of time. Froome perfectly placed, Matteo Matteo Trentin taking advantage of flawless tactics once again and immense strength. This is a uh, journey of discovery for Matteo Trentin on the Vuelta. He's dominated this reduced sprinters field and at the moment no one has got any answer to him. Yeah, well, that's an incredible ride by Jenny Muscon, uh, being given permission, it would appear, by, from Chris Froome in the last 500 metres to go for it himself, and go for it he did. So look at this, look at Muscon there. So it was just before that corner, corner that Chris Froome gave Muscon permission, it would appear, and he just all he can do is hold the wheel. But like I said, that's very impressive to be able to do that. It's Vincenzo Nibali alongside Chris Froome as well. So Nibali, 1-2 in GC, riding alongside each other and matching each other stride for stride. That's Moscon, the fast-finishing Italian, who has uh, blitzed past Soren Craig Anderson to take second place with Soren Craig Anderson in third. And Michael Schwarzman uh, picking up fourth place. Then comes that pairing of Chris Froome and Vincenzo Nibali. So, as we often see in these finishes in the second, we, we would have never expected to see GC riders up there battling out this close to, to the front in the first week, but the race has changed now, and you can see all the splits behind as well. But a, a magnificent win from Matteo Trentin. And Nibali scores a small point over Chris Froome there, just placing one better than him on that finish. Yes, sixth and seventh Nibali and Froome, with Gianni Moscon second behind Matteo Trentin after his late permission to sprint. Wilco Kelderman and Alberto Contador were in that group on the same time as the winner. So were Fabio Aru, Michael Woods and Esteban Chavez. But three members of the top ten, Ilnor Zaccarin, Miguel Angel Lopez and David de la Cruz, lost seven seconds, which, considering all the effort they put into gaining 20 yesterday, seemed a cheap giveaway. We weren't expecting to see you up at the front there, but you've shown you can sprint as well. Yeah, today was an atypical sprint, it was pretty hard, we tried with Froome to stay at the front and then the last K, we were in a good position and why don't try? Shame for the second place but Trentino is a strong rider and it's okay. So it wasn't a plan this morning, it was just something you improvised? Yes, exactly. Uh, you, know, you never know how the race go, but yes, yeah, it was fine. So, stage win number three for Matteo Trentin and Grand Tour win number 15 for Quickstep this year, having now equaled their totals of five from the Giro and the Tour. Trentin also extends his lead to 19 over Chris Froome in the points competition, just in time for it to come back down again in the mountains this weekend. Matteo, you told us this morning you didn't like the look of the finish, but it worked out just fine. Tell us how you structured those last three kilometres and the lead out. Yeah, we decided to, to keep a really good tempo on the last three and a half K because we knew it was quite hard. Actually, it was harder in real than on the map. Uh, yeah, but also before the, the guys made an awesome job to pull the whole day with team and then made the last speed up together with uh, Eros uh, and uh, Enric, Yves, and then uh, with uh, Nicky, uh, Alaphilippe and, uh, and Bob, we made the last three and a half K. But it was really awesome by, by the whole team. And the only bad news, the only unfortunate consequence of your sprint was that David de la Cruz has lost a little bit of time on general classification. Uh, yeah, it's a pity. Uh, I don't know how much he lost, actually. But the finish was super technical, and we know that also. So it, it, was, it was a risk. Davide Villela scored his first mountain point since way back on stage six today, getting in the break to take the three easy ones at the top of the only climb before dropping back into the main field. And unexpectedly, insofar as anything is really unexpected on the Vuelta, there were some small adjustments in the top ten today. Miguel Angel Lopez, Ilnor Zaccarin and David de la Cruz all lost seven seconds because of the splits in the field. And in the case of de la Cruz, that was enough for him to lose fourth place to Wilco Kelderman. Zaccarin is now just 12 seconds ahead of Fabio Aru, and Aru two minutes 21 ahead of his teammate Lopez in tenth place. Well, it wasn't quite a day off for Chris Froome today. The tricky run into the finish made sure of that, but it was the closest he could have hoped for. Thankfully, it was a day that we could just sit on the wheels. The sprinters obviously interested in, in, in the stage win. Um, congrats to Matteo Trentin. I think the team worked hard today and he deserved the victory. But I have to say, Gianni, Gianni Moscon came close and had he, had he maybe not done so much work protecting me, I think he would have had a much better chance. 
Chris, you've still got a plaster on your knee. I think you've got one on your elbow. We saw the crash and you fell on, your, I think, your left shoulder yesterday. Any pain or any issues whatsoever today? No, I mean, yeah, for sure I'm going to feel a bit better than bruised today, but that's, that's, that's normal after crashing twice. Two big stages coming up this weekend, Chris. La Pandera, typical of Wells of Climb tomorrow, then Sierra Nevada the day after. Which one do you most fear? I don't think I really fear either of them, but I, I quite anticipate them. I mean, I think in the climbs, it feels as if uh, certainly we're a lot more in control of the race. It's only a, a handful of guys who really can put us under pressure in the climbs. So for us, that's, that's what we're trained for. That's what we're looking forward to. Um, certainly two really hard back-to-back -back days coming up, but I think Sierra Nevada with, with the altitude as well being over 2,500 metres, that's, that's going to be massive on Sunday.